good morning. Good to see each and every one of you out this morning. Uh, a couple of announcements here to pass your way. Now, as you notice, uh, this uh, young man here is not Pastor Roth, and uh, his name is Caleb, and I think I mentioned to you before, uh, Caleb is planning on seminary in about a year, and he's with us over the summer months. Uh, he became a member of St. Paul's here uh, a couple weeks ago as we brought him into LCMS membership. And so throughout the summer, we're going to put him to work, uh, called a subdeacon. Uh, that's not to be confused with a deaconess or a deacon. It's a subdeacon is an old, uh, very old role in the church. It's basically an assistant uh, in the church service. And so he'll be doing some of the readings and some of the singings and the prayers today. And so it's a way for us to kind of get him equipped, get him used to the uh, services uh, before we kick him out to seminary here in about a year. And so he'll be with us uh, for the summer. Just recently married uh, to Dealey. And uh, so Dealey's right there. So make sure to greet uh, both of them. And he'll be here for the second service as well today. And so that's exactly what's going on here this morning. So just to kind of, who is this guy here standing next to Pastor Richard? Well, that's Caleb. So a um, couple other things here to pass your way. Um, for this week, Tuesday, we are starting up our women's Bible study at 1030. And so keep that in mind. Uh, Wednesday, we have our divine service at 6 o'clock. Uh, that is going to be our midweek service. So we're slowly kind of putting things back together here at St. Paul's and uh, with respect to the whole COVID-19. And so on uh, Wednesday, again, the midweek divine service at 6 o'clock, and that is with communion. And then on Thursday, we have the men's Bible study at 645, and uh, that's meaning that I have to wake up early. And so uh, 645 for the Bible studies uh, for the men as well. With that in mind, uh, one quick kind of disclaimer, uh, as many of you know, uh, as you saw last night, uh, tragically, some of the different uh, uh, difficulties in downtown Fargo uh, with some of the different rioting and so forth. Uh, one thing is that it's, in a sense, as a pastor, you feel that you have to make some sort of statement and uh, pastors feel like they have to comment on the whole situation. So I wrote this up last night. And in reflection of everything going on, for everything from COVID-19 to uh, the tragic, uh, tragic riots that are going on and some of the different difficulties that we've seen in Minneapolis and so forth. And so it's a little bit of a disclaimer here, and I want us just kind of to set our minds at ease as we think about this. And it says this, On Sunday we shall preach Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins for everyone. Christ is the right thing in a world gone, gone mad. To preach Christ is to preach everything because status and sex, ethnicity, and ability contribute nothing to Christ's work on all of our behalf. We are one in Christ. Together we find our death in his death and life in his life. Indeed, it is Christ for us uh, as Christians, Christ for the world, Christ for us today, tomorrow, and the weeks to come. Amen. With that in mind, our order of service today is Divine Service Setting 3 on page 184, and our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 496, hymn number 496.
ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of page 184, page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all of my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by the virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead, and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I ask you to please turn to the inside of your bulletin as we sing the introit to the tune of C. The Spirit of the Lord fills the world. Alleluia. The righteous shall be glad. They shall exult before God. They shall be jubilant with joy. Alleluia. God shall arrive. He shall be scattered. And those who hate him shall flee before him. Sing to God. Sing praises to his name. Exult before him. The Lord gives the word. Behold, he sends out his voice, his mighty voice. Awesome is God from his sanctuary. The God of Israel, he is the one who gives power and strength to his people. to God on high.
let us pray. O God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top to the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do, and nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore its name was called Babel because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language, Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the great day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. 
Ask the congregation to please stand. Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced because I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. With one heart and one voice, we confess the one holy faith as expressed in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn of the day, hymn 500, hymn 500.
In the name of Jesus, amen. Congregation may be seated. Well, today is Pentecost. Yes, it is Pentecost. You can tell by all the red at the front of the church. It's actually one of those few days of the church here that the church gets to see red. Red on the pulpit and red on the altar and the lectern, even red on the pastor. Now, Pentecost is celebrated 50 days after Easter, which is where the word penta comes from in the word Pentecost. Penta means 50. And 50 days after Easter is the day that the crucified and risen and ascended Lord Jesus Christ poured out his promised Holy Spirit on the church. You heard about this pouring out the Holy Spirit in today's gospel reading from the, in, excuse me, from the reading, not the gospel reading, but from the epistle reading from Acts. Indeed, in the book of Acts, we heard about a mighty rushing wind that must have sounded like a tornado. We heard about tongues of fire resting on each one of the apostles. And so that is where the red of Pentecost comes from. The color of fire, the color of fervor. We use the color red 50 days from Easter to show how the Holy Spirit was poured out on the church. Now keep in mind, yes, keep in mind that when the Holy Spirit was poured out on the apostles, everything changed. Indeed, everything changed. Everything changed before Because before that Pentecost day, these same men, they trembled in fear. And after, things were quite different. You see, before they were silent, they were afraid, they were often hiding. But indeed, everything changed and they were no longer able to keep silent since the Holy Spirit led them to do what they feared doing. That is to say, after the Holy Spirit was poured out upon them, they stood up among the crowd in the temple and they began to preach in languages they had never learned. And get this with confidence and boldness. Now, they were not just babbling nonsense, but they preached in the languages of the people who had come to Jerusalem from all over the area. People from all over the world were there, and these people heard the apostles speak of the mighty acts of God. These formerly fearful apostles now spoke boldly about Jesus. Yes, Christ, who is the Son of God, who was crucified for the sins of the whole world and who rose again from the dead. They spoke of forgiveness and they spoke of eternal life in Jesus' name. The apostles had no fear but proclaimed Christ. Now, none of this would have ever happened if it were not for the wind and that fire of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And so today we have read as a reminder of how the Holy Spirit came down upon Christ's church. We have read that reminds us of the fearful apostles being turned to boldness to preach God's word to a world bound in chaotic sin. You see, the Lord has this pattern, as he indeed has this pattern of using weak and fearful and unqualified people to proclaim his word. The Lord used fearful and weak disciples to speak his word, and through that word, Jesus was delivered to sinners that they might be saved. And here's the catch. The Lord still uses fearful and weak disciples, disciples like me and like you as well. Today, dear friends, you are reminded by way of God's blessing that you have received his Holy Spirit. And as the baptized... Each one of you, as the baptized, you will be used to give witness of your faith in Christ Jesus, to speak of the mighty acts of God that he has done by giving his son to die for you and for the entire world. But it won't be easy. People do not like to hear about their sin and their need of a savior. They are much more content with empty religious cliches or foolish television preachers who babble nonsense. This actually brings us to the other reason why we have red today. Red is also the color of blood, is the color of suffering and affliction. You see, before that Pentecost day, the disciples were paralyzed with fear. We've heard that in previous sermons. Their mouths were stitched shut with trembling because they knew if they spoke about Jesus that they would be killed as he was. They knew that giving a witness to Christ would not lead to partying and dancing on the streets, but would lead to suffering, and blood. 
And so today we have red as well. In fact, the word witness, yes, that word witness that we've heard before, in the original languages, it actually is the same word for martyr. Yes, for martyr. A martyr, keep in mind, is someone who suffers and dies because they cannot be silent about the joy and eternal life that they have by faith in Christ Jesus' death and resurrection for them. And as it was on that first Pentecost, that first Pentecost day when the Holy Spirit led the apostles to speak of those mighty acts of God to the people, so it is today for you as well. Holy Spirit, he will lead you to do what you alone are too fearful to do, and that is to give a bold witness to your Lord Jesus Christ and what you think, say, and do. And the way things are going for the church and the world today, my friends, you may well find that it is likely to be a martyr context, just like the apostles You see, right after Jesus promised to send his Holy Spirit to his church, he also said these words, the time is coming, the time is coming that whoever kills you will think that he offers a service to God. That time did come for the apostles. Yes, indeed, it did come for the apostles. Bartholomew was skinned alive and beheaded for the faith. Thomas was burned alive. Matthew was nailed to the ground and beheaded. St. Peter, he was crucified upside down for his Lord. Paul, beheaded by the emperor of Rome, Nero himself. Others were stoned and killed in terrible ways, too graphic to mention from this pulpit. And so we have read the color of the martyrs on Pentecost, the color of blood. As we hear this today, we may think that it would be wise to be silent about Jesus To not rock the boat, if you will. But the Holy Spirit, he will not let your fear keep you in silence. He will use you in life and perhaps even in death to be a witness to the joy that you have by faith in Christ Jesus. Frankly stated, my friends, it is difficult to give witness to a world that hates to hear of sin and forgiveness. It is difficult to give a witness in your own house, to your family, and to your friends and neighbors. And my friends, you will all fail at times in fear. Yes, in fear, you and I, we will be silent, though the Spirit would urge otherwise. In trembling, you will deny your Lord Jesus when you ought to speak and give a clear witness to him and his word of truth. Get this, the world will even accuse you at times and perhaps maybe want to kill you. The devil, well, he sure will accuse you and show you how awful your sins are to try and lead you to despair and condemnation so that you might be silent. Even your own conscience, your own conscience will accuse you, telling you that you aren't worthy to be a witness of Christ. But always remember, baptized saints, remember that the Holy Spirit is with you. You are baptized The Holy Spirit will continually bring you to Jesus and to this altar to fill you with forgiveness and life and salvation. Having the word poured into your ears in this holy absolution, being given the body and blood of Christ from this altar upon your tongue and that mouth of yours. Yes, when you sin, when you fail, when you deny your Lord in fear, instead of confessing him and giving witness to him and what you say, think, and do, Listen to the Holy Spirit as he calls you to repentance, though, and brings you back to Jesus. Cling to the promise of Jesus. Listen to the promise yet again that is for you this day. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Baptized saints, know this, that the promise of peace from your Lord is yours to the end of time through the power of the Holy Spirit who brings you to Jesus and fills you with Jesus in all of his gifts. And that peace is not just some ethereal, floaty, abstract idea. It is real peace. Peace with God, peace in turmoil and persecution, peace from all of your fears, peace that passes all understanding, a peace that will strengthen you and preserve you steadfast in the faith unto life everlasting. 
So even though you may have every reason to fear and to tremble, and I might add that there are a lot of reasons to tremble and fear these days, there actually need not be any fear any longer. You can take heart, baptize saints, and courage to have courage and to remain steadfast in this confession of Christ for you, Christ for me, Christ for this whole entire world. We can remain steadfast even unto death. Not because of our own strength or what we have done, but because of the Holy Spirit who is with you through that word and sacrament, bringing Christ to you and you to Christ, centering you in that peace that surpasses all understanding. In the name of Jesus, amen. I ask you to please stand for the offertory. Ask congregation to please be saved for the offering music. As a way, a reminder, the offering plate is in the very back of the sanctuary. Offerings can also be dropped off here at the church, mailed in, or also there is access to giving online on the church website at anchoredminot.com. Ask congregation to please stand as we continue with the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For all baptized believers that they would be given ears to hear and an eagerness to learn all that the Holy Spirit teaches them about their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the salvation they have through him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For spiritual renewal in our congregation, district, synod, and the whole church on earth, that by God's grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we would long to keep Christ's word, dwell in his peace, sing God's praises, and love our neighbors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who serve in Christ's church, that all pastors may faithfully preach law and gospel, All missionaries be fruitful in their labors, and all church workers be faithful in their service, so that all who call on the name of the Lord may be saved. Let us pray to the Lord. For peace among the nations, for those who rule over us, for those who protect and defend us, and for liberty, that the peoples of our world would be blessed to live in health, peace, and quietness, unhindered by the threats of violence, oppression, or fear. Let us pray to the Lord. For an end to the pandemic, for those afflicted in body or spirit, and especially for those who have requested our prayers, including Audrey and Carl, Charlotte, Deason, David, 
Don, Elaine, Glenn, Gloria, Janice, Jeff, Melvin, Sharon, Terrence, Sharon, and Tom, that their hearts would be neither be troubled nor afraid, for nothing can separate them from the love of God has for them in Christ, who has overcome the ruler of this world and secured for them eternal peace in his kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who have gone before us and now rest from their labors, let us give thanks to the Lord that we would follow them as they followed Christ and be found faithful by those who come after us. Let us pray to the Lord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, all glory, honor, and worship is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, both now and forevermore. Amen. Top our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May we see if our departing hymn, hymn number 659, hymn number 659.
Oh, look, that was a great hymn. Think of those lyrics of that hymn. Wonderful peace of Christ for us in the midst of all of that is going on. Lord be with you here this week uh, as well as today as we continue uh, as a church. Uh, thank you for Caleb, and uh, he's going to be gone for a couple weeks, and then he'll be back. So we didn't. So if you don't see him next week, the week after, we didn't chase him out. So he's going to be gone for a couple weeks, and he'll be back and off and on throughout the summer, giving us a hand. And so, again, make sure to introduce yourself to Caleb and Dealey as well. Lord bless and keep you today. Again, you have the peace of Christ, that bold confession of Christ as well. May the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit, continually empower us and give us the joy to confess Christ, not only for our forgiveness, but for the forgiveness of our neighbor. We are centered in Christ. You are centered in Christ. Amen.